praise. You've been with us since morning. And I ask, Lord, by your grace, keep this voice so that it will say what your mind is according to your will. And as it pleases you, not as man wishes, not as the speaker wants to say, but Lord, speak through your servants, for all of us are ready. May your name be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Wonderful. Amen. Finally, we've arrived to one of the best part of Matthew chapter 5. You know, you read it, you stop. You don't, want, you don't know whether to sing or to dance or to sit down or to stand up or to... You don't really know. There are two of them that made a mark in my life. And that's um, verse 6 and verse 8. And now we want to look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. The Bible says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed. We've seen the first blessed, second one, third one, this morning, and um, now we are looking at the fourth one, blessed. And for those of us who were with us in the morning, and if you've not listened to it, please take your time tonight and go back to blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And then there's a lot on meekness, there's a lot on be meek. And this time the Lord just was very straightforward with us in the morning. I says, there's not much message you are going to say. Look at the antonyms of meek and meekness and read it out first. So I went into the dictionaries to get these horrible, horrifying words to read out. As you're reading it, your body is cringing, boastful, proud, self this, self that, self Yes, you're reading it, it's like, no, I don't want to read them. At the point, as you're reading it, you want to know, no, these are not the words I want to say with my mouth. And then the next thing that came to me, no, these are not the people I want to associate with. Nobody will want these people around them. No employer will want them. No children will want them as parents. No parents will want them as children. No community will want them as the members of community. Everybody pushes them to one side because it's all, it looks like all the vices we are put in as antonyms of meekness. And the Lord said now, wait. Now read what meek is. The meaning and meekness. As I was reading it, it's like cold water poured. <sighs> that's the kind, that's where we should be. He says, well, when I said they will inherit the earth, it opens the door. Everybody wants something good. Everybody wants nice people, polite people. Everybody wants those that are, can be easily entreated. Some people want those who will be compliant. People want those who are gentle and quiet and yet doing what they are doing. And then sometimes this heat and bubbling hot waters don't really produce anything. Because they heat up everywhere. They heat up the church, they heat up the office, they heat up meetings, they heat up communities, and they are no good. In the neighborhood, whoa, their next door neighbors are like, where are we? So the law says, very simple. Because if you don't read, if you don't go straight to know exactly what they mean, you just flip this passage. And you now see what Jesus meant when he finished with blessed are the poor in spirit. Okay, that's number one step, isn't it? Followed by the second step we must all do. When you realize you're poor in spirit, what do you do? You mourn for deliverance. 
mourn for salvation. You mourn it because it's a wrong life. You don't want to continue. And the Lord says, once that is taken, there's a new life that comes. And that new life is meekness, gentleness, peace, joy. Hallelujah. Lowliness of heart. Because salvation takes away all those and gives to you perfect rest in him. It's so unfortunate that that word, we've taken it for burial. Peace, perfect peace. In this dark world of sin, the blood of Jesus to me. And we've taken it for burial. And we only sing it. Even when the person is going to hell, we're still singing peace. Is there any peace in hell? When we knew this, this man, the community said, finally, we can have rest. Yes, on his burial ground, peace, perfect peace. <laughs> of course, we don't even sing it with our heart. We don't even know the meaning. <laughs> That's a beautiful song. My peace I give unto you. When he came to the, his disciples, when they were all in the hiding, when he opened the door and walked in, he says, peace be unto you. And now we are singing it to all the unbelievers around who we don't know where they are going. But <laughs> may the Lord help us. Today, nobody wants to sing that song, isn't it? Because it looks like it's a death and burial. It shouldn't be. So peace comes in. There's something that follows immediately. Whoa. Once I was blind, but now I can see. I was dead. What happened to um, Lazarus in the book of John chapter 11? When the Lord says, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus rose. He said, remove all those clothing. They removed all the clothing. He said something next. Wash him and feed him. Give him food to do what? Eat. So when we rise up, we've been starving for how many years? Starving. What have we been eating? Crumbs. Rubbish. What have we been eating? Scavenging. Eating things that we ought not to eat. When you are living in sin, what you're consuming are the things that destroys. No good food goes in. So our salvation and all those things suddenly goes. What happens? Hunger. Hunger. And that hunger, you are looking at this, you say, eh, is this food? I don't know how many of you who had been to um, surgical procedures. I don't know how many times I've been through it from the age of six. And plus all the children. So those days they don't give you food until about uh, the sixth or seventh day. The first food you want to eat. Show, 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 show. Because they've been giving you just water. Just the infusion. They give me food to eat. Three days on. The first food you're very hungry. They said, no, 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 no. Don't eat too much. So that um, they told me we're not. Thank God for technology and science. And improvement. We don't talk about those things again. Once you're out of, uh, you are eating. Those days you don't eat. You know that? They, kept, they still starve you. You've been starved before the procedure. And you're being starved again. So they'll ask you to start. For me, those days, I had pap, tea, the first day. And if you can tolerate it, pap. And if you can tolerate it, I think it was praise. They started, I said, what? Everybody, I just grabbed that food. My sister-in-law, ate the thing. I'm hungry. And I'm told to eat. You see? You want to eat. So sin starves our spiritual man. We've been eating all sorts that are no food. Suddenly we are delivered. The hunger comes. Blessed are those. Lord, I've done it. 
You've put your life into me. It's time now for me to eat. You know, when David says, As the deer panted for the water so much, after you, amen. How many of you have seen the deer going for water? How many of you have seen, whether on the television, whether in the zoo, or out in the bush? What's their sound? Good. And they are going with their tongue all out. They don't care if lion is coming. And I usually ask, are they, is, what kind of thirst does these animals have that other animals don't? Just to go and lap water. The Bible says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. You know, when you talk about hungry, being hungry and thirsty, I don't mean, like I've just drank, isn't it? it, it you can come now thinking, oh, Pastor Grace, have a cup of, a bottle of water. I'll say, thank you. I'll keep it beside here. If you shan't come now, say, oh, do you, Pastor Grace, can I, oh, you're, you're sure you can. But when I'm thirsty, and even if it's the lead of that bottle, when you're thirsty, every clear water is water to you. Every clear liquid, sorry. It, you don't care whether it's hydrochloric acid. It goes in. Until it goes in, then you say, oh! You want to drink. When you're not thirsty, people can give you water, you keep it. But when you're thirsty, you can go. When I mean hunger, it's not anything in London. So please, don't think it's the one. I mean the hunger that you see at war times. When children are almost skeleton. When they now see the food they can't eat. Some of them are dropping for vouchers to eat them up. The vulture is waiting for them to stop. They are now skeleton. Nothing. Hunger. And I want to let you know that sin is worse than starvation. Because it has taken everything. Remember, when they talk about Jesus of Nazareth, they say, what? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can anything come out? Isaiah said, and the year that Uzziah died, you saw the Lord. And what happened? And uh, continue. What else did he see? I am a man of unclean lips, dwelling among the unclean people. Until that happened. So the hunger we are talking about here, brethren, is not the, uh, I'm starving. You've not seen anything. You know the kind of hunger that Solomon in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 26. And these two women came to him. Hey, let's talk about this hunger before we now talk about blessed are those. Who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Second Kings. Chapter 6. From verse 28. If there be death in the land. If there be pestilence. If there. Am I there? Sorry. I'm in second Chronicles. Okay. Second King. Chapter 6. 28. And the king said unto her, What elect thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman. 
that he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall and the people looked and behold he had sackcloth within upon his flesh what kind of hunger and she said to me give thy son let's boil him not even let's cook him they boiled him and he ate that's hunger so when we're talking about hunger I don't mean oh I'm starving and then you just grab sandwich you won't finish half of it and chuck the rest in the bin no that's not hunger not the one you eat jello fries and you say ah next Sunday no the one that will make two women to agree to boil their son that's hunger It's the kind of hunger, I remember when my parents were telling us about the Nigerian Biafra war. Even to find purple, papaya, unripe one, even small one was a big deal. Because it would be plucked and cooked for eating. They were scavenging, looking for food. Have you seen scavengers in fields? Going from one rubbish to the other. Looking for food to eat. Food that people have dropped off during the day. People go to pick. Not like it's madness. It is what? Hunger. When hunger comes, you can't hold it. Not a, no, not any little longer. You can't wait. You'll be shaking. You'll be fainting. You go for what sh you shouldn't have eaten in life. It can be anything. You don't even want to know whether it will hurt or not. You will eat it. When it comes to water. Water is not juice. When you are thirsty, you are thirsty. People may give you coke, give you juice. You still want water. Because nothing can quench any thirst. Apart from water. Nothing at all. Then brethren, let's now look at what the Bible says here. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. It then means that nothing is going on into this head. All you want to do is eat. All you want to eat, do is eat. As it's coming and coming, you're consuming and consuming. And the Bible is saying, I don't mean the physical thirst. I don't mean the physical hunger. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Let me tell you how it happens. You just got born again. And then when you read it, you open your Bible. You see, Christ had given us life more abundantly. He said, what? You go again. As many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. You go again and read John chapter 1 verse 1. Let me see what that Bible says. You're flipping. You don't even mind whether you're tearing the books of the Bible because something is happening in your life. Once I was blind, but now I can see. You want to read it. The first thing that happened to me when I got born again was to read. I didn't know whether I'm understanding. As you're reading, you just want to read. He says, oh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So this word is Jesus. Hey, you turn your Bible again. I say, hold on. Somebody call you on the phone. Please let that phone wait. Revelation. My eyes are opening. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. So I now have the power to become the sons of God. Hey, that one is not so. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Let's go again. And you flip. Eh, eh, eh. Waiting, waiting, waiting. John chapter 2. What did he say there? And he turned the water into wine. Hey, and then the water that was turned into wine was so sweet. So Jesus will turn my water into wine. So why have, why have I been wasting time? So if I invite him to my wedding feast, 
Hey, he will make all things happen. But why have I been wedding all these years? I've not invited him. Hang on. So right now, Jesus, you said, okay, wait, 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 wait. Chapter three, what did he say? Ah, I missed it here. Ah, except a man be born again. He can't, I mean, it's like hunger. You can't wait for Bible study days. You're carrying your Bible. When the preacher is finished, he says, oh no, do we have to go? Can't we stay here? You ask, is Bible study tomorrow? They said no. Why? Are we not Christians? Shouldn't we be studying the hunger and the thirst? Hallelujah. And brethren, this shouldn't be just for a moment. This is what you characterized us all the days of our pilgrim. Pilgrimage, isn't it? Brethren, this is what Jesus said. Blessed are those, Psalm 39 verse 9. Lord, all my desires is before you. And my going not hid from you. There is a desire in the heart to know him more. Like Paul the Apostle. Each time you're praying, halfway into your prayer, halfway into the study, you're still crying that I may know him. Oh yes, I may know him. You're reading, he's revealing, you still want to know him more. And his power, I want to know the power that resurrected you from the dead. How did you quicken my mortal body? You are reading it and you had he quickened who we are once alienated from the common word of Israel. He said, no, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Beulah knows. Isaiah 26 verse 9. He says, with all my soul, I have desired thee in the night. Yea, with all my spirit within me. Will I seek thee early? Lord, I'm hungry. Lord, I'm thirsty. With everything inside me, will I seek you early? When you're in that state, nobody asks you whether you've prayed or not. Nobody will ask you, have you read your Bible or not? When you're in that state, there's no room for backsliding. When you're in that state, there's no room for growing old. The Bible said of Israel, Ephraim, gray hair is here and there and he knoweth it not. When you are in that state, I tell you, Satan will go away. He won't even near. He will not near. The Bible says here, with all my soul, I have desired thee. What do you want me to do, Lord? What do you want me to do, Lord? Let your will be done. Just as Jesus said it. Nevertheless, let thy will. Anywhere you lead me, I will go. Anywhere you send me, I will go. What you want me to do, that will I do. That's a man who is hungry and thirsting after righteousness. Amen. The word comes, Lord, bring it on. Because you are sold out. There's no other reason. Every other thing beside you to the left and to the right is gone. Gone. You desired it. I want to thank the Lord today that Tugochuku, my brother, is here. He helped me to grow in my Christian life. When I was asking the Lord for sanctification, he may have forgotten quite young those days. I said today, it doesn't matter what Tugochuku does. I won't say a word. Before he comes, I'll finish praying. And he comes. He will say, Gochuku, will you leave that place? he comes come back and say, Dear, I thought you said you're born again. <laughs> And I'll go and cry and say, Lord, I missed it today. Give me sanctification. The next day, Gochuku will say, ah, girl, I thought you said you are born again. Finally, I say, Lord, I will never leave you unless you bless me. I thank God now it's his turn. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> hey. He just wants to eat it. Nothing else matters to him now other than this word. Amen. It's now his turn, isn't it? But I'm still there. Amen. And no retirement. Hallelujah. There's a hunger. There is a thirst. There is a push. 
There is a drive. It's like new wine. It, it takes over your life. There's a zeal. Hallelujah. There's an emboldenment in there. It takes you. You want to know more. You want to see him. We want to see Jesus lift. No, not that one. That one is a dance one. There is the one that is born in the heart. That you are ready to face every Goliath. No wonder David says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Psalm 73, 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none I desire but thee. There is none I desire. It's so much. There is a hunger. Amos chapter 8 verse 11. The Bible says there, Behold, this comet I will send famine, and not famine for bread and water, but, which one? Hearing of the word. May that be our portion. That this will be the time that we seek nothing but the living word. That we seek the Lord with all our hearts, with all our mind. Jesus is saying, anyone in that state who wakes up in the morning and the heart is bubbling for the will of Elohim, the heart is there, hungry for his word, for his will, thirsty for him. Brethren, that's not what we see these days. All we see is fat Christians who are too full and not happy to eat anymore. Christians who are so okay that the food the Lord has kept for them is decaying and being thrown away. The food. Go to our, the dustbins of our life. What you see there. Virtue. Grace. Peace. Joy. Goodness. Mercy. Strength. That's what we see in the spiritual beings of Christians. Why? Because they have eaten and they are full. Go to the dumpy arts. Go and see virtue poured out. Because people have eaten and are full. May that not be your portion. May that not be my portion. The Bible says we should not take the grace of God in vain. Because at any point you think you have arrived. You've had a, enough. And you can't change. They will still be coming. But they will go to the bean. They will go to the bean. But the Lord who is bringing it. Know that sufficient unto a day. The evil thereof. Give us this day our daily bread. So the one coming tomorrow. Is the one you need for tomorrow. Everything he has given for today. Is what we need. And to eat it. And to keep it right inside. Our heart. Righteousness. Who thirsts after righteousness? Right standing with God. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Sow to yourself in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow grounds for it is time to seek the Lord. That's the righteousness that the Lord is talking about. 1 Corinthians 15 32. Awake to righteous and sin, uh, to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. That's the righteousness. The right standing. The holiness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Not after the world. Not after compromise. Not after rising and falling. Hot and the cold. Blessed are those who thirst, hunger and thirst, not for silver, nor for gold. Remember that song? Nor for ease, nor worldly pleasure, nor for fame, my prayer shall be. That's our song today, isn't it? That's what we sang today. Not for ease, not for worldly pleasure, not to be seen, not to be recognized, not to own the world. Because the Bible says, and this present world shall pass away. 
Not for all the degrees. That's not what I'm asking for. Not for all the airplanes and for houses. That's not what I'm asking for. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Imagine if all the Christians in the world are in this state. We would have turned the world upside down. We would have won the world for Christ. The world is looking at us and say, we know there are things that these Christians do eat. But we can't see them eating those things. We can't see them pursuing and going for them. When they come to the world cafeteria, they don't ask for righteousness. Oh, they ask, do you have a plate of wood? He says, yes, I want half. Oh, do you have a plate of a compromise? He says, yes, okay, give me a quarter pound. And they wait. Oh, do you have a, a plate of cheat, cheating? He says, yes, okay, leave that one for today. Just give me one full load of pride. And in their shopping bag, is filled with all these. But the Bible is saying here, awake to righteousness. We should go there and ask, do you have a pot of peace? Say yes, can I have all please? Say, is that all you have? No, we still have some in this store. Can I get them? Because you don't want to run out. Do you have a pot of forgiveness? He said, yes, please, can I have it? Oh, we don't have it. Do you have, is there another shop that have it? That's when we are reading the Bible and then precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there. That's what we are doing. We're shopping around. Amen. When you flip through your scriptures, you're shopping what? Around. You see, hey, Hosea, you said yes, do you have it? Hosea said, I have it only in chapter one. No, I needed about four portions. He said, wait, let me check on my computer. Okay, go to Daniel. I think Daniel had two chapters. He said, okay, you go to Daniel, but I still need an extra chapter. He says, then it was Luke that wrote it. Go back to Ruth. That's the way we study our Bible. You want all of it. You want to keep them. You're hungry. You're thirsty. Amen. You want to prepare a good meal. You want enough. You store it. It's running out. You don't want to run out. Brethren, this is, if you see Christianity the way it is, it's the best place to be. I don't know what other illustration to give. May the Holy Spirit talk to us. But I think I've tried the much I can. But let's still keep going. Amen. Hunger and do what? Thirst. After what? Righteousness. Now preachers, listen to me. How many of us, we see a brother, a sister, who is coming to church for the first time? Oh, my brother, how are you? He says, fine. The Lord is with you. The Lord is revealing me that in, two, in the next um, two days, you'll be flying a jet. And the brother will say, amen. And then you start prophesying lies to their head without first knowing that, seeing that this brother is hungry, wretched, and need food called righteousness. Amen. A lot of people for 10 years they've been in church. The pastor has not opened this chapter to read. They have no clue. And by the time you're sensitized in that manner, when you now read Matthew chapter 5, it looks like your Bible is, is not there. But it's been. And you said, where has this been? It's because they've sensitized you, of course. You don't even care. You don't know that such thing exists. Righteousness. Philippians 1.11 Being filled with righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of him. There were those that were righteous. The Lord found Noah. The Lord found Enoch. He said, for Enoch was not, for God took him. Amen. For Noah, there was only one righteous man upon the earth. There were those who were righteous. Brethren, it's not a difficult thing. Don't let anyone tell you it's difficult. Don't anyone tell you, oh, that's a hard root. Don't let anyone make it feel like our God is wicked. Let me use that hard word. Because when people resist righteousness, you see them accusing God. Why do you ask us to do what we can't do? So that's why they're happy doing what they're doing. They're happy not, not, 
They are happy and they don't want to give up anything. When he says hunger and thirst after righteousness. Job was a righteous man. Do you know that? That the Lord has to boast of him. Even to Satan. Can the Lord boast? And say go and try grace. May the Lord help us. Daniel was. So brethren you can see there that what the Lord wants us to do. Is what the Bible says Psalm 63 verse 1. It says oh God thou art my God. Only early will I seek thee. My soul tasted for thee. My soul longed for thee. In dry and thirsty land. Show me your righteousness. Show me your ways. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Lord, I want to see you. Lord, touch my heart. Lord, break up the stony beat of my heart. Lord, do a surgical operation and remove the foreskin of this heart. Lord, make it pliable. Lord, soften it. Lord, take away all this unforgiving spirit. Take away all this malice. Take away the jealousy. Lord, take away the bitterness. Lord, take away evil speaking. Lord, take away you are just crying, crying, desiring, coming unto him. Lord, I want to pray and I was unable to pray. Heavenly Father, I need your grace. And so you continue. So brethren, this is where we find ourselves. Until you hunger and thirst after all these. Seeking the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29. The Bible says. If you will seek the Lord. Thou shalt find him. Amen. He's not bow. That you need to tear yourself. And call. And he will not answer. He said before you open your mouth. I have already done what? Answer you. Yet while we are praying. He says, seek him. If we seek him, he will. Isaiah 55, 6 says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him for he is very, very near. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. After listening to me today, brethren, the only secret in ministry is righteousness. The only minister that devil will respect is a minister with a pure heart. Is the one that he cometh and findeth nothing in. Tell me a minister who will blow hot air and do nothing and I'll show you one living in secret sin. And I'll show you one who had kept so many things in there. Show me a minister that the Lord will come to speak to. For he says, who shall stand before me? He says, them that will lift what? Holy hands. So why will anyone waste time to become a minister, to being a Christian, and you're not happy to be righteous? For the Bible says that God does not behold what? Iniquity. He does not. He does not behold iniquity. He can't answer the prayer of the unrighteous because their prayer is not right. They pray wrongfully. They pray against those who hurt them to die. Oh, my enemy die. Seven times die. Be destroyed. If you had been destroyed, would you have got born again? So why will another person die and be destroyed? That's not the heart of Jesus. Not at all. Righteousness. Brethren, I don't know. My heart is saying a lot, but it's not coming out to my mouth. The church is despising righteousness today. Go round the churches if you will find. If you will find one or two among the multitudes who have not bowed their heads to idols. Go round church A is like church B, church B. Is, the worst thing is that almost everybody is doing the same thing now. Where they are copying it, I can't tell. Where they are copying it, I can't tell. The only difference is the location. But pattern, way, kind of people, where is the righteousness of Christ? Where is the fear of the Lord? Where is the reverence of Elohim? Where is the true worship? Where is the bowing of Jesus? Why have the church chosen? Do you know what it means? Let me tell you, brethren, it may not sound very nice. 
To remain in the church and unrighteous is fighting God. What will you do? I'm here. I'll serve, I'll do it the way I like. Is it force? Brethren, is it by force? Is it by constraint? Look, Joshua said to them, choose you this day. It's a choice. Who you will do what? Serve. As for me and my family, we will do what? Serve the Lord. Why will you come to church and remain in sin and in compromise? Why are you wasting time? Are you fighting with the Lord? Any need for that? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Who can? Do you know what it means? To remain in all those and not allowing the word to root out the all the unclean and you're still coming in recalcitrancy. Do you know what it means? You're saying, who are you? I stay in this church. Drive me away. Don't worry. A day is coming. The Bible says the day of the Lord is terrible. But the Lord is looking for those who have broken and contrite spirit. Those who will yearn for him. Those who will pant after him. Those whose words, his word is sweet to them. Those who eat it like food. That's the words the Lord will use. And they are the, those, those the Lord will speak to. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. At that moment you want to do your own thing. I, where, is, where is the hunger and thirst? At that time you want to justify yourself. May the Lord take all the self in us. Take them away in Jesus name. At that time you want to prove a little bit stubborn. Do you know what you are doing? At that time you choose to do it your way. Where? At that time you are considering to backslide. At that time you are putting a little consideration in, to lower your consecration. Please don't let Satan gain any access anymore. Tighten up brethren. Let's all tighten up in Jesus name. Luke chapter 11 verse 10. It says, for everyone seeketh you. Where are you? Where did you go? We are looking for you. I pray that all of us today, we will come to the point where we will look for him and say, Jesus, everyone, I'm seeking you. I'm part of those searching for you. And I want to see you, Lord. Amen. May the Lord help us. May the Lord give us a hunger and thirst for righteousness, for purity, for holiness. So that we can stand right before him. As a church member, as a newly born again Christian, as a minister. Why I'm talking so much is because there's no need being in ministry if you don't hunger and thirst after righteousness. There's no need. He will only use those he can talk to. Those he can minister to. Those whose life are right. Those who he can come to sup with, those who he can walk with, those he can dwell in their hearts. If you don't seek it, the Bible says, they shall be filled. Filled to the brim. What do we test for? The living God. As Psalm 63 verse 1. And 143 verse 6. We thirst for the living God. We thirst for the word of God. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. As newborn babes, we desire the sincere milk. That's what we thirst for. We desire to be like him. Oh, to be like him. Oh, to be like you, Jesus. I want to be like you. I want others to see Jesus in me. Amen. 
What are we seeking for? Lord, what would you have me do? Every morning, what would you have me do? Thy will, O oh Lord. I'm seeking it. What is that righteousness we're seeking for? Brethren, no going any other. If you are seeking for righteousness, you will not be engaged in any other, in any dodgy business. Not at all. You will pro, you produce all things honest in the sight of God and all men. Because you're seeking after righteousness. Your heart at all times. Even when the enemy creeps in. It's not like offenses will come and they will come. But as they are coming in, because of what is in your heart, you're saying, oh Lord, help me. Amen. You recognize it immediately. When, when we are in that state, hmm, you mind what your tongue talks and says. Because righteousness is righteousness. For us to run this, to run this race, brethren, we must desire it. We must hunger for it. We must take no junk. Take no what? Junk. There's a lot of junk out there. Believe it or not, I'm a child of God. Come the way as you are. God accepts this. And the worst of this junk is when you are using others as an example. That's the worst thing anybody could do. Immediately you start the comparison. The Bible says they that compare themselves with one another are not what? Wise. You know, there's some, oh, you mean to tell me this person will not go to heaven? But they have more members than you do. They have more money than you do. They are known more than you do. The scribes and Pharisees were known more than Jesus. Because they were asking you, who are you? Are you not the carpenter's son? Did you go to school? Are you one of the scribes? Do you know who we are? We know Moses' law. They are talking to their creator. It's very funny, isn't it? Very, very funny. So, brethren, once we get to that point, it is your responsibility to look for it. What you want, what you choose. Sometimes, we may bl blame those who are deceiving us. Please, brethren, they have their own race to run. You don't know what they are doing. And you have looked at them as an example. Please, don't ever try it. Don't try that with your life ordinary human being you are looking at them because you've seen them in television you don't know what they are going through in their personal life you don't know the makeups that you are watching you don't know you're watching a mirage you are seeing nothing you don't know the cry in their heart saying lord deliver me i don't want to go to hell look at thirty thousand watching me how can i go to hell help me you have no clue you have no clue that some of them had made irreparable mistakes. And they are looking for how to get themselves back. But it's too late. Even while they are standing there blowing all those things. It's not their heart. But that's what they are known for. Pride is not allowing them to eat the humble pie. And says I've deceived the church. But these are the people a lot are following. A lot wants to look like. Do you know? The secret is that autopsy didn't come out and we heard of that one that died of cocaine. And look at how many people have followed. And who knows how many times he's been crying in the secret and asking the Lord to deliver him. To deliver him. Yet when he comes out of the church, he does his gymnastic. You thought it's the power of the Holy Spirit. You didn't know it's the influence of drugs. And you are copying. You want to look like him. You want to paint your church like he is. Where is he now? Please, brethren. Because that's the problem right now. That's the only thing the Lord is showing me. There's a lot of copying going out there. If you know that those you're copying, a lot of them are non-Trinitarians. They don't believe Jesus is king. They don't believe he's God himself. All they latch on is Luke. Son of man, son of man. And you're following them joining them you don't know how many of them are still in the old and the power of the Holy Spirit not there 
You may not know. Please, brethren, don't follow the multitude to commit sin. Don't follow the multitude. Not at all. Stop looking at them. What did the Bible say? Dig the word. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. There is all the righteousness in this word. Seek, you'll find it. Stop waiting for people to show you and you're asking, where is it written? Search for it. Search the scriptures. For them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. That's what the Bible says. Search the scriptures for yourself. You can't copy any human being anymore. You can't go after them anymore. They will never show you again. Rather you pray. And pray. Because the Bible says great deception will be upon the earth during that time. The Bible says many are called, few are only chosen. In that time, the Bible made it clear. Not all that say, Lord, Lord, we enter into the kingdom. The Bible made it clear. Very clear that most people who said, I did miracle, I did this. I do not know you. Depart from me. You led the church astray. You led that daughter astray. You left that brother astray. You taught them evil practices. You taught them compromise. You quenched their fire. You destroyed their sword. You made them not to stand for me. Depart from me. You worker of iniquity. How much, how many downlines will those people have? Who have destroyed the church. May I never be in that down line. God forbid. I will never be in that down line. I have a wonderful treasure. The gift of God without measure. We will travel together. My Bible and I. I have it. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord, he's not dusty. Amen. Praise the Lord, the pages are well flipped over. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for the riches inside there are mine. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord that my eyes have been opened. Amen. Brethren, do not let anyone deceive you. The temptation is sore. And then it's not outside, it's in the church. How many preachers are talking about righteousness? It's all about money and their belly. And what they will get. False prophecy. Nothing happening at all. No transformation. Not at all. You come into a church. What you see is, is this a church? <coughs> Blessed are those who will hunger. Is that what the Bible says? Who hunger. It's a continuous statement. And thirst after Christ, after the righteousness, after his holiness, after his beauty, after his face, after his persona. Blessed are those who will hunger and thirst. Just as the deer, they are coming and they are panting and they just want more of me. Blessed are you. Hallelujah. Blessed are you that will not be tired. Blessed are you that will not say that I've had this message before. It's still the same thing. Blessed are you that will pick up your Bible. You're reading it and you're chewing it. And you say, Lord, what else? Blessed are you when you're reading it. Sometimes you get up in your room and lock the door and start dancing. And keep doing this all on your own on the Bible. You say, eh, you wrote this. Hallelujah. How many of you do that? I do it. There's some passages you will read. You just get up and you are doing like this. Wah, 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 wah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's blowing. It blows you off. You don't know what you're dancing. It's so sweet. It's so beautiful. It opened your eyes. Some of them are promises. You say, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're a winner every day. In the world, you're a winner. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. The Bible says, they shall be filled. Amen. They shall be filled. All the Lord wants is hunger and thirst for it. Leave the, other, the rest for me. I do the job. I know how to pack you full. Leave that, leave that container. I know how to pack it. 
Hey, Pastor Moody and I were doing something. I said, Pastor Moody, this can't go in the car. I said, Pastor Grace, have faith. It will all go into the car. And I said, no. The Lord is I know how to pack you full. I will fill you up. Blessed are those who hunger and taste after righteousness. Just hunger for it. Forget about the filling up. The Lord will do it himself. He will take you round. He will open your eyes. There are virtues. He will pour it upon you. And the secret is, as a minister of Jesus, will you ask? Will you ask? Will you hunger? Will you thirst? And the Lord is saying, my children, your beat is to feel the hunger. My beat is to bring the satisfaction. But when we don't hunger for it, we'll be thirsty. We'll be dry ministers. We wouldn't know his face. We wouldn't know his will. We wouldn't know what to give out. Blessed are those who will hunger and taste the goodness, the right standing, the holiness, the relationship. Amen. We've been nodding our head, isn't it? Are we ready to say the Lord? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it, Lord, and make me whole. Let's sing it again. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it, Lord, and make me whole. Shall we rise up to talk to the Lord? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it, Lord, and make me whole. I want you to ask the Lord. Blessed are those who hunger. And thirst. It's not did it say desire or those who want to? It says those who will really hunger and thirst. Hunger and thirst is continuous. It's a continuous thing. Every day, Lord, if you have called me into ministry, Heavenly Father, what would you have me do? Every minute, Lord, did I get it right, Lord? How would you have want me to do it? In the night, Lord, did I get it right? When we open our Bible, speak me to me, Lord, for thy servant hear it. Our desires are lost in his. Our will lost in his. Everything about us long for him. My eyes long for him. My nose long for him. My hands are reaching out for him. My legs are walking towards him. My heart is yearning for him. My head is all full up with him. My belly is longing out to be filled with his righteousness. That's the state the Lord wants to get the church Having no spot or wrinkle for his return. Are you in that number? Seeking after righteousness? Ask the Lord to forgive the church of compromise. 
copying the wrong thing. Stay strong. Holding on to things that are non-essentials. Tell the Lord from today, as your servant, let that hunger return. Lord, let that hunger, the shivering hunger for you, for your righteousness, Lord, let it return. That thirst, the thirst that is almost breaking the truth, for righteousness, let it return. Father, let it return unto me today. That hunger. What is right, Lord? Give me the grace to go into the Bible to know what is right. Where we read in Hosea chapter 10, he says, He has shown the old man what is good. And what does the Lord require of us to do justly and to walk humbly with him? That's what they required. Lord, please. Please, Jesus, give me your righteousness. I will never leave you unless you bless me. Quench my thirst. This longing thirst, Lord, quench it with your righteousness. Cloak me with your righteousness. Dress me up with your righteousness. Fill me up with your righteousness, Lord. I'm hungry, Lord. I'm hungry for your word. I'm hungry for you, Lord. <sighs> Let's ask the Lord for the grace when his righteousness comes, brethren. Sin is gone forever. Everything that looks like it is gone forever. Deceit is gone forever. Cheating is gone forever. Lies gone forever. Wickedness gone forever. Unforgiving spirit gone forever. Drugs gone forever. Alcoholism gone forever. In Jesus name we pray. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. One thing will we seek after. That we may, Lord Jesus, know you. Behold your face. Be in right standing with you. Precious Father, we long for your righteousness. We want to be like you. We want to be like you. Father, we are thirsty, we are hungry. Lord, we've been hopping around, we've been looking, we've been searching. But thank you, Father, for the promise that we shall be filled. We shall be filled. Fill us, Lord, with the right kind of food, with your righteousness, with your holiness, with your purity, with your consecration with your longing. Fill us, Lord. We want to be lost in you. Fill us, Lord. Oh, Lord, fill us, Lord. We want to be sold out to you. Father, fill us, Lord, from the hair of our hair of our head to the sole of our feet. Lord, we want to be seen in you. Take our hands and let them be. Take our mouth. Take our ears. Take our intellect take our legs. Everything about us, Father Lord, use them. It shall be no longer us. Father, we just want you and nothing else, oh Lord. Nothing else, oh Lord. Even when we go out there, Father, we want to see you in our lives, in our workplaces, in our families, in the community, in school, Lord. Everywhere, Jesus, we want to be clothed in you. Father, Lord, we want others to look and all they can see is your glory. Therefore, Father, we are hungry for these. Father, we thirst for these. Father, there's a lot of deception out there. Father, there's a lot of false prophets out there. There's a lot of people who do not know you. Father, we want to be separated. We want to be 
like those, Lord, that are sealed only in you. That there will not be any compromise. We will not be deceived. We will not fall by the wayside. Lord, when we look, oh Lord, all we are seeing is you. To the left is you. To the right is you. Oh Lord, may our life be consumed in you. Jesus Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, a king of glory, a savior. You can hear our heart, oh Lord. Hear our heart, oh Lord. Hear our heart, oh Lord. Hear us, Jesus. Hear us, precious Father. We ask for nothing. We ask for no silver. We ask for no gold. We ask for no fame. All we ask, Jesus, oh, to be like you. Oh, to be like you. Oh, to be like you. In the name of Yeshua, thank you for your promise that we are filled. Thank you for filling us. Thank you for those that come to you. You will not cast out. Thank you, Lord, for you have said unto us to come unto you. Or all of us that are labor and are heavy laden will find rest in you. May your name be exalted and let this be our portion. For that no spiritual pride will come in. It doesn't matter what you commit into our ways. Lord, every day will we remain in humility to be filled by you. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for you have answered our prayers. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.